What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Prison Break Season 5 Episode 1, or Prison Break Sequel Episode 1, Season 1, whatever. I'm I'm gonna call it Prison Break Sequel, just because the original show, I feel like, came to a satisfactory end. You know, just how everything sort of wrapped up. It felt like that's where it should end. This feels like it's picking up new story, new ideas, so... I'm going to call it Prison Break Sequel Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, so, it's called o o G o Gigia? o Gigia? o o Gai o Gigia? I can't remember how to say it. Whatever the name of the prison is. Um, mm. But yeah, first episode, pretty good start. So, first off, I want to talk about my opinions of the original show. Um, I actually just got done watching it recently. I watched it on Netflix. Uh, and I watched it because of a girl, and of all things. Yeah, who who would have thought, right? But yeah, a friend of mine that I'm also kind of interested in, she really liked the show, told me that I should watch it, and of course I'm just like, okay, anything for you. Um, but yeah, watched it all the way through, really enjoyed it. First season, enjoyed the, I mean, enjoyed the prison break part of it, just watching as Michael is trying to figure out how to get out, you know, watching him sort of figure out everything, and seeing all the tattoos and what they mean and all that stuff was really interesting. Second season, I've read a few articles that say, oh, the first season was great, but then after that, it's not really prison break anymore. In my opinion, it still was, because part of the prison break isn't just breaking out of prison, it's also, can you stay out of prison? Because even if you, if somebody breaks out of prison, but then they get captured immediately, you didn't really succeed in your prison break. So I think the second season was a lot about them trying to avoid getting recaptured, trying to stay out of prison. So that's still part of the prison break, in my opinion. Um, so still enjoy the second season. Third season, though, they ended up back in prison in, I think, Mexico. can't remember where they were. But they ended up back in prison again, and so now they're trying to break out again. And then ultimately they do break out and find out that you know, there's some secret organization that they need to take down. So at that point, it did kind of shy away from the whole prison break part of the show. But I still kind of enjoyed it. I would say, though, the fourth season did get a little bit, I guess, over cumbersome in that it felt like every single episode, it was like, oh, I can trust that person. Oh, never mind, I can't trust them. Oh, no, I can trust them. Oh, never mind, I can't trust them. It felt like they just kept going back and forth, and they really should have just, you know, you can trust that person. That's all you need to know. Stop trying to go back and forth. Stop trying to convince me otherwise. This one is starting off, once again, there's some sort of shadowy organization look, lurking in the background. Uh, Michael, or, well, Michael's still alive, uh, even at the end of, I, I watched the little, like, extra movie where they were breaking Sarah out of prison, and so he was dead at the end of it, but now, turns out he's still alive. For some reason, Teabag, everybody's favorite character, right? Don't know why he's back, but some, for some reason, he gets a picture that shows Michael's still alive, and so, of course, he takes this to Lincoln, who just... <laughs> tries to get him out of his house because who wants teabag around but of course you know he is probably going to play some sort of part in the show i hope he dies in this season because honestly i was hoping he'd die in the original show but anyway lincoln sees this and so he heads back to new york something's going on with him in chicago just kind of throw away right at the moment maybe it'll come back to it but apparently he's back to his old ways and that you know he's trying to get money and he can't pay off his debts anymore so now people are trying to track him down and get the debt back so but he gets out of Chicago and travels to New York where Sarah's living she's now got a husband um, and of course little Michael and so just kind of a side note the guy that's playing her husband is from uh, Royal Pains Hank from Royal Pains so I'm assuming you know he gets shot in this episode by one of the people from whoever's trying to kill Lincoln and Michael uh, he gets shot in the leg, and I'm just like, no, he's not dying. <laughs> There's no way they get this type of actor, you know, somebody who's recognized, and then just kill him off in the first episode. That just, why would you do that? Um, but yeah, so I'm interested to see what, I'm interested to see if he's going to have a story at all, or if it's just going to be like, you know, oh, I can't believe you're going after Michael when you have me type of thing, and that's going to be the only story he provides. Uh, but, you know, Sarah's side of it is, Pretty much that she gets they get attacked by this woman who apparently finds out that Lincoln finds out about Michael and so now she's trying to track down everybody who knows about it and they're trying to erase Michael from existence for some reason because they look up his picture on the internet and it's not him anymore 
Um, but they get attacked, and you know they're trying to stop this woman, but she shoots. Uh, I think his name is Jacob in the leg, and then Sarah's about to take it to her, and then all of a sudden the police show up, so she escapes before the police get there. And so that's pretty much her side of it. She does have a little conversation with, uh, I think they call him Mikey. I want to say they call him Mikey. But she has a little conversation with him, which is one of the, it was like pretty much one of the main parts of the previews, which is she's talking to him. It's like, your father was a storm. <laughs> you know, if the storms return, but it's not always, are, are, is it the same type of storm or something along those lines? Um, so pretty much, you know, just kind of foreboding words to use. But that's pretty much her story. Lincoln, meanwhile, is going through all this stuff. He has the picture, but he still doesn't want to believe it. And then he goes to Michael's grave and realizes, wait a minute, what if he's using some type of code? And he erases the message at the bottom, and it reveals the name of the prison. Prison. Ogigia, or however you say it. And so then he digs up the, the casket, opens it up. It's not Michael, it's just a jacket. Uh, ultimately, the name of the jacket is the name that Michael's using now, uh, Kaniel Otis, I think is his name now. And so he goes to Yemen, where this prison is located, uh, brings along Sucre, or no, he goes to see Sucre, or Sucre comes to see him, wants to go along, but he says no, because he's taken, uh, what's his name? The, uh, I know his name, but I can't remember it now. I'll remember it later. But there's this guy that was in the first first couple seasons of Prison Break that escaped with them. Uh, he's now in, um, he's doing jihad in a mosque, I think, somewhere in the U.S. And apparently he's picked up some Arabic. And so he kind of goes along. Somehow he knows all these people that help him get into Yemen, and him and Lincoln into Yemen. And so they go see Michael, and of course, kind of like I figured, Michael says, I don't know who you are, because I'm assuming he did all this for a reason. You know, he faked his own death, changed his name for some sort of reason. I don't know quite what the reason is yet, but all in all, I mean, for a start to a show that's returning after a very long hiatus and is bringing in a new story, pretty much, it's it's good. You know, it's enjoyable. It still feels like Prison Break. You know, the, the opening theme is still, it's not the same, but it's very similar. You know, you got all the characters returning, all the main characters. You've got the continuation of the story. You've got this idea of breaking out of prison again is still here. Now the question is, though, what else is going on in the background? You know, that's honestly that's kind of the point of the first Prison Break show, which was, yeah, he's breaking out of prison, but Lincoln's also being framed for the murder of the president or vice president's brother, and so it's like, well. Who did that? Why is he being framed? What's going on there? And honestly, it grew from there, and that was the main point of it all. It was like, what's, who, who's behind the the curtains trying to pull the strings? You know, who's doing all of that stuff? It feels like that's kind of what they're going for here too. You know, there is a an attempt at a prison break again because Michael's in prison in Yemen, but there's something going on with these people who are trying to race him, and then on top of that, it looks like he there's some sort of like civil war going on in Yemen and. Apparently the, the name that Michael's using now is the name of the terrorist who's trying to overthrow the Yemen government. And so it's just like, there's so much stuff going on. But at the same time, that's kind of what I enjoyed about the original show. You know, there's stuff going on in the background. So it's not just about breaking out of prison. It's also got some more interesting stuff going on. Because honestly, the concept of, oh, we're just going to break out of prison, they've already done it twice. So it's not like we haven't seen it before. Now, they could do something new because it's a bit more modern than the original show. So I don't know, maybe it's a more high-tech prison or something like that. They could they could throw a few new things into the prison break itself. But I think a lot of people that are going to watch this show aren't going to watch it to see them, oh, what, are they going to break out of prison? What's going to happen? Are they going to be able to get out? I think a lot of people are going to tune in to see what's going on with Michael. How is he still alive? What's going on with Lincoln? Is he going to be able to help his brother? What's going on in the background? You know, is Sarah going to be involved? I, I don't know. Just in my opinion, that's what this show is mainly about. That's what they focused on in the first show, and that it looks like what they're focusing on again. So, a few other things to talk about. Uh, the first one is there was one scene that I'll admit did kind of make me go, come on, like this is just a little too unrealistic. Uh, Lincoln gets into New York from Chicago and starts driving away. Well, <clears throat> he sees this car pull out and start 
you know, following him, and all of a sudden it turns off. But then a truck pulls out, and he's like really focused on this. I'm like, please tell me this isn't actually going to be somebody's following him. Well, later on he says somebody was following me, and the truck, one of the trucks that was following him, turns out to be the woman that tries to kill Sarah. I'm just like, how? How? <laughs> you know, like it would make sense if maybe. Like they they sped up to catch up to him, or maybe he turned on his blinker the wrong way, and like, and then turned the other way, or something like that, or maybe he didn't turn on his blinker, and neither did they, and when he turned, so did they. I don't know. It just it felt like there wasn't anything special that they did to convince me. Oh yeah, he's being followed. The only reason I knew was because the camera focused in on it. Like, ooh, somebody's following him. I think it would have been a lot more interesting if they had shown us that. And then showing them turning off, and then showing us the other one pulling out and showing them turning off. And then at the end of it, it turns out nobody was actually following him at that moment. You know, it turns out somebody else was, but he just happened to focus on those two because he's paranoid. But no, we get the, you know, oh, somebody's following him, and he noticed, and it's true. Somebody is following him. It just didn't seem, uh, most other shows, whenever they show somebody being followed, they actually notice something that they're doing that I'm like, okay, yeah, somebody's definitely following them because they're doing something weird or out of character or not something a normal person driving would do. This one, it just felt like normal people driving and somehow Lincoln figured out that he's being followed. It was weird. Um, the other thing to talk about is I, I am a bit concerned going forward because Sarah is now remarried. I am a bit concerned that this is going to turn into a bit of a love triangle type thing and that's not where I want the show to go and just because that's not something that works in most shows you know if there's ever a love triangle in an adult show most of the time it, it's really stupid and the, the jokes that are made are dumb and it just doesn't feel very emotional because honestly in real life how often does this really happen not that often it only happens really in TV shows and honestly you know in kids shows it works because they're kids they don't understand that for adults we realize most of the time love triangles don't happen if they do happen somebody in inside the triangle is gonna realize okay I'm acting like an idiot and kind of move on or just get out of there so I hope that's not where this is going and the final thing to talk about is Michael himself you know what I'm curious to see, just because of how well they set up, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with his character. It, it would be interesting to see, you know, not only because we saw he was talking about having the, the brain tumor and how it was fatal, and so that's why he killed himself, you know, to save Sarah, because he realized he didn't have long anyway. So we saw that part of it before, so was he lying about the brain tumor, or... You know, did he actually have it, but whenever he faked his death, somebody picked him up, and they realized that they needed to save him, and so somehow they saved him again. I don't know. You know, I, I want more answers there, and obviously they're going to give it to us, because they wouldn't just, oh yeah, he's still alive, and then not explain it. Um, but I am, honestly, that's probably the one part of this show right now that is, has got me the most curious. You know, you've got all this stuff with this whoever's following Lincoln, whoever's trying to erase Michael, what's going on in Yemen, what's up with this prison, what's up with Michael's new identity. All that stuff is very interesting, but honestly, I just want to know about Michael himself. You know, Why is he still alive? What happened to keep him alive? All that stuff is probably the most, I guess, mysterious part. So, really looking forward to what they've got in store for us this season. Uh, hopefully they can keep up the intensity. Hopefully they can sort of not have to draw on what the what made the show great before. Hopefully they can start to give us new stuff that's going to make the show sort of stand out a bit more from the original Prison Break. Uh, maybe maybe they'll just turn us into Prison Break Season 5 and just kind of keep going with what the show had before. But I would like to see some new stuff uh, just to make this feel a little bit more unique. But all in all, really enjoying it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What did you like and dislike about this episode? Let me know. We can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Prison Break sequel reviews, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.